Okay? That's what your sympathetic nervous system does. Your parasympathetic nervous system is what in most people, in most especially higher stress people, the parasympathetic nervous system is not nearly as active as your sympathetic nervous system. Again, the sympathetics are so important when we feel a threat. But we don't want that to always be active. And why is that? Because when the sympathetic nervous system is wound up, the body tenses up. We don't need to always be prepared to run from that lion. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So what if I'm always stressed? We all know people, some of you may be in that crowd, that are always sort of, you might call them type A, right? Type A people, people that are always, you know, a little bit higher stress level, um, those kind of people. And there's some people that are like that and some people are not. But when we're in this high level of stress for an extended period of time, it leads to really bad things. And so we're going to talk just a second about chronic pain. Because I believe uh, 20 million adults in the United States live with chronic pain. So but let's talk about our nervous system and why that happens. Okay? No, you're fine. So when there's an injury, whether it's a physical injury, a mental injury, emotional injury, what happens? Your brain protects you. Your brain's number one job is to protect you and make sure no harm is done. What is that? That is the number one goal of your brain. And that's a great thing, right? If we didn't have that, huh, that would not be good, okay? But when the brain is protecting us and our sympathetic nervous system is winding up, you know, that fight or flight response kind of kicks in, our body tenses up, muscle spasm starts to occur, you may not even know it's happening, but it is, blood flow to an area begins to decrease because the muscle is choking it off, and nerve function starts to worsen. That flow of the nervous system gets interrupted. And so, chronic pain, again, whether the chronic pain is from physical or emotional trauma, we see this every day in our clinic. And Zach sees it every day as he's out treating patients around St. Louis. So it's a very, very real thing. And when, then when that starts to happen, the nervous system gets wound up, your movement pattern alters. Your walking pattern, you may take um, shorter steps. Because if you take a longer step, maybe you think you're going to hurt yourself or you're going to lose your balance. So all these things happen. So now let's talk about what is neuropathy. And I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. I'm not going to violate HIPAA. But I'm going to guess that at least 50% of people in this room have neuropathy in either their arms or probably more of their legs. I'm going to guess that that's going on. It's a very common thing, but we want to talk about what neuropathy, or we also call peripheral neuropathy, is. All right. So peripheral neuropathy is just damage to your nerves that are outside of your spinal cord. So we have our brain and our spinal cord, which Zach already talked about. That's your uh, central nervous system. And then all the nerves that are leading out from your spinal cord is your peripheral nervous system. And those are the nerves that get damaged when we have peripheral neuropathy. Those are the nerves that get damaged. And so why? Why, why do those nerves get damaged? Well, there's essentially, you know, going to nerves, there's a blood flow, there's a blood supply going to nerves. But why does that nerve, why does that blood flow to the nerve supply, or the blood supply to the nerve, why does it start to worsen over time. 
It doesn't happen to everyone, but why does it? Well, sometimes we know why, and sometimes we don't. There is a gentleman I'm treating, and hopefully the uh, power comes back on, because there's, there's a video I'm going to play, a short video. But my patient's name was Steve, and Steve had neuropathy for uh, 20 years. 20 years, and he's right now, he's probably 69 years old. So he's had it since he was in his late 40s, and no one's ever been able to help him. He went on some pills, didn't really do much, and there was no real treatment for him. And I'll tell you this story in a bit, but that's so much the time you go to a doctor and you may say, why? Well, if you're not diabetic, they don't know. Well, there's genetic components, everything is genetic. If your parents had this, you're maybe more likely to have it. Traumatic injuries, chronic pain, chronic stress, chronic overload of your sympathetic nervous system, highly stressful, that's going to choke off that blood supply. Uh, metabolic problems, infections, all these things can affect blood supply. And that's what the neuropathy is, essentially a breakdown of the nerve because the blood supply is beginning to get altered. And the last one that's on this slide is called idiopathic. And that's what my patient Steve had, has. They don't know why. It's just idiopathic. It just, it just happened. And so he's lived with it. And so we started working with him last November. He just lived with it. And he's a golfer, and when you golf, balance is super critical, leg strength when you golf is super critical, all these things, and it started to take away from his life. So I'm glad that we connected, we were connected with him as of the end of last year. All right, so some, some symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. So you may, if you have it, I guarantee you these are gonna, you're gonna know what I'm talking about here. Numbness. Okay, maybe in your hands, maybe in your feet. Steve, the guy I'm talking about, for 20 years he's had in his legs, and about two or three months ago, it started appearing in his hands. The unfortunate thing is before, before I sent him to a physician to look a little deeper at his spine, no one had ever done even an x-ray of his back. If you, here's a little tip. If you have anything going on in your arms or legs, at least get x-rays of your neck and spine, your lower back. And for 20 years, no one's ever thought to do that. I think most of our medical system is either they're overworked or they don't care enough. Sorry, I'm just going to say that. Um, Okay, you may get burning, stabbing pain. Those are also signs of neuropathy. Um, sometimes people say, I feel like I'm wearing socks or gloves, and I'm not. Again, that altered sensation. Difficulty walking, running, doing things you enjoy. Balance, coordination issues. These are all people with neuropathy get all this. Um, maybe you have uh, what's called foot drop, where you're walking and you feel like your foot's kind of dragging. Maybe you're dropping things in your hand. So these are all components. It doesn't mean if you have these that it's just neuropathy. It may be something else, but these are things to start, sort of start to look for. And 20 to 30 million people in the U.S. have neuropathy. I'm going to probably say it's more than that, but 20 to 30 million people have neuropathy. But all hope is not lost. So we've said a lot of bad things, but all hope is not lost. So there definitely is treatment options. Maybe not treatment options to 100% cure your neuropathy. You know, no one can say that. If you go to someone and say, we're going to cure your neuropathy, I'd probably turn the other way and not give them a penny because we can't say we're going to cure it, but every day I see improvement and changes happening. Okay, I see people getting warmth back in their feet and their hands that, because we actually, at my clinic, we measure the temperature of people's uh, feet and hands as we do our interventions.
to see because if the nerve is waking up, then the blood flow is improving, and so the warmth, they should start to have more warmth in their feet, and we typically see that. But some things, and Zach's gonna, Dr. Boris gonna talk just a second, but three things we wanna talk about today is treatment options. First, you have to safely increase your activity level. It's all about that blood flow. So it's all about that blood flow. You have to be active. Now, you have to be smart about it too. If you've been active, in, excuse me, if you've been inactive for 10 years, the last thing we want you to do is go out and walk a mile. You know, we have to dose this accordingly. So that's where a medical professional, a physical therapist, or whatever, I'm not here to tutor them more, but you need to see people that are have advanced training in the right way to dose exercises. A newbie is direct current electrical stimulation. Okay? My clinic that's in the Chesterfield Valley, which is about, whatever, five, six minutes from here, we are the only people in St. Louis that have this device. It's fairly newer technology. It's about seven years old, FDA approved. But it's direct current electrical stimulation. Now, maybe some of you guys have had electrical stimulation before, a TENS unit, you've probably heard of that before. This is much different. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And then lastly, um, lifestyle changes, eating better, sleeping better, you know, trying to get more quality sleep. Um, you know, I encourage you, if you haven't had a sleep study, I encourage you to really strongly think about it. I had one back in 2018 because I was waking up, even though I was getting six, seven hours of sleep, I was waking up exhausted every day. And I had, I had moderate sleep apnea and I didn't even know it. And so I started using uh, sleep, uh, C CPAP and it's been a game changer. So if you've never had a sleep study, it may not be a bad idea, especially if you're waking up feeling a little bit tired. And the third thing is just stress management. There's books, novels written about this. But we could do all the best work for you. Zach can see you, I can see you, and we could do the best one-hour treatment you've ever seen. But if you leave our clinic or Zach leaves your home and you go right back and you're a type A individual that is so consumed with everything and worried about everything and your nervous system is wound up on top of that, 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 that's a problem. Okay? You have to be part of the solution. We're here to guide you and get you on the right track and you have to be part of the solution. But I will say that stress is a killer. It's a hidden killer, but it's a killer. All right, now, you're probably tired of hearing me talk, and thank, thank goodness you're not sitting here, because I'm sure spit is just coming out of my mouth trying to talk so loud into this, but I'll let Zach talk a little bit. All right, and then another good option for both stress management and exercise that I know they offer here is Tai Chi. Um, it's an ancient Chinese martial art, which initially was developed for combat and self-defense, and evolved into a sport and form of exercise is a gentle, low-impact form of exercise which uses a series of deliberate flowing motions focused on deep and slow breaths. And we have it on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yes, and I know several of you do it already. But, um, and the evidence shows that Tai Chi decreases the sympathetic activity, which is also helps control your stress, it decreases blood pressure, heart rate, helps normalize abnormal heart rhythms, breathing, and prevents, uh, preserves energy. It also helps with cognitive disorders by increasing oxygen levels to your brain. And then Mike's gonna talk a little bit about the newbie. So this is the newbie right here. And you're more than welcome afterwards to come up, experience, feel it. I'll show it to you if you want, but it'll be here. I tried it. Yes, you did. Okay, so as we talked about, the, the newbie is direct current electrical stimulation. So what does that mean? Well, that means it's direct. The nerve, the current, which you all have current running through your body. I'm sure you're aware of that, but that's how everything functions. But the current, if I have an electrode on my shoulder and an electrode on my 
wrist, the flow of the current is going to go from my shoulder down to my wrist. Okay? If you have a TENS unit or any of the other types of alternating current, the other type of machines are alternating current, and again, not here to bash anything, I'm just here. When you get alternating current, if you have a pad on your shoulder and on your wrist, you'll feel the current in your shoulder and in your wrist. But guess what? You're missing all of this. This nervous system that's flowing down, we're trying to stimulate the whole thing. Okay, we're not just looking at two points. So that's one thing that really, uh, is amazing about it. We can put a pad on your foot and on your neck and current flows all the way through. Again, we're trying to reset that nervous system, if you will, because the nervous system is what controls the muscle. Okay? Those nerves leaving your spine are controlling everything. When we put someone on the newbie, the first thing we do is called mapping. And when we map, we are specifically looking, the area we're treating, for that disconnect between the nerve and the muscle. And we know it's there because it'll feel like a hot spot to you. If I have the pad, uh, and I'm taking the pad down your arm, where you have a trigger point or area of pain, it's going to pick it up. And that's going to be an area that we're going to focus on from a nerve standpoint from a current standpoint. And then again, they, the newbie is used on a wide variety of different types of people. It started back in, uh, I think 2014, it started, the guy that developed this started it with like bodybuilders because bodybuilders are always trying to look for, without taking drugs, ways to get stronger. And so this machine started off actually with bodybuilders and they saw significant strength gains. And so the inventor of it, who had been through a lot of physical therapy himself, he was a former college hockey player, he thought to himself, wow, wouldn't this be really cool if patients needing physical therapy could have access to this unit? So he went through the whole FDA process and got it approved in 2017. Um, but again, we use it on all kinds of people. We use it to improve strength, balance, uh, sensation, um, trying to decrease the sympathetic nervous system, over dominance of the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. There you go. So, so again, in your uh, handout, you'll see it talks about the mapping process. With 100% accuracy, we can find out the points in your body where you're having nerve to muscle dysfunction. Okay? And what I do in the clinic, I do a lot of manual treatment, so I'm using my hands to find it, and then I use this machine to reinforce, yep, that's the area, that's the area, that's the area. Next. Reprogramming of the nervous system. So this is much different than other forms of electrical stimulation where you are um, have the electricity going through you, but you're sitting or you're laying down on a table with the pads on you or on your back or wherever. With this, with the newbie, we have you do functional movement patterns. Because we believe you have to move in order for this to work. Mm -hmm. The movement is the most important thing and the newbie just facilitates it. It facilitates it. We also use the newbie for people who have neuropathy affecting either foot or hand. We do what's called a foot bath where we, and it's in, there's a picture of it in your handout, but we put your feet or your hands, whichever we're dealing with, in this tub of water and we put, I know this sounds terrible, but we put pads in the electrodes in there and the current goes through the pads, through the water and back up to wake that up, to stimulate those nerves. Does it 100% cure everything? No. Is it a big help? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We see it every day. Okay? And also, 
with the, the newbie, we look at this type of electrical stimulation as long-lasting. And why is it long-lasting? Well, we're creating movement patterns. Your brain and your nervous system is working because we have the newbie on you as you are moving. So you're reprogramming the software of your body. Again, nervous system is the software, the muscles, the bones, that's the hardware. Just think of a computer, think of that computer, your nervous system. So we're trying to reprogram that, we do it by movement. And most people between one to four visits, they see sub substantial improvement. If I see someone four times and they get no improvement, then I'm rethinking everything I'm doing. I'm not gonna say you're 100% better, but I'm gonna say improvement. And 20% improvement is better than zero improvement. But this is a, uh, uh, like a 45 second video of Steve, the guy I was talking about earlier. The 69 year old who is a very competitive golfer and he dealt with this for years. And we've been seeing him now for uh, probably four or five months. And from month one, he started showing improvement, improvement, improvement. His legs got stronger, got better balance, more stability. And now when he goes to putt, he's steady over the ball. When he's on a, and it's a bad lie, if he's on an incline or something, he feels confident. And, you know, again, a large part of his treatment was the, the newbie was on him for the whole hour as we were doing different movement patterns. I'm kind of skeptical by nature, um, so when I heard about this, I thought, oh, okay, well, we'll see what happens, but coming in and meeting with you, laying out what's going to happen, how the newbie works, what that actually does, um, that's, been, that's been a great benefit for me, uh, and it does work. It's not, it's not a scam. It's not a fly-by-night thing. This is something that actually improves your life, uh, so I encourage anybody, if you have any neuropathy at all and any inclination to try and get it approved, it's definitely a, a thousand percent worth doing it and putting the effort to make it work. All right, Zach's going to talk about, uh, no, no, I'm going to talk, right? Oh, me, sorry. A little confused. Oh, just, okay. So lifestyle changes, we talked about this, getting better sleep. Um, you know, your body heals itself. You guys don't know this, but your body heals itself when you're sleeping. It repairs, it restores when you're sleeping. And so I'm not here to say you need six, seven, I get six hours of sleep in a night and I'm pretty happy about that and I feel good. Some people need more. I can't get more, I don't know why, it's just weird. Six hours and I'm done, but you need to listen to what your body's telling you because your body repairs itself. Toxins leave your body when you're sleeping, not when you're working and all stressed out, so you got to get in a restful state. Right. Um, again, earlier we talked about it. If you haven't had a sleep study, it's never too late. I encourage it. It's been huge for me personally. All right. Uh, okay. Um, changes in diet. Um, <laughs> probably not going to tell you anything you don't already know, which is making it a reality. You know, limit your your fatty foods. Um, I don't know. It's probably, probably Beth has told you everything about this, so I'm not sure I can tell you anything, but uh, you want to try to limit as many toxins as we can. You know, alcohol is a toxin that can cause nerve damage. Now, you know, Whatever, I'm not here to say how much you should or should not drink, I don't know. I mean, I might have a couple drinks a week and I don't think I'm harming myself, but I know if I was to do that every day and really ingest a lot, I don't think those toxins in that alcohol and all the sugar would be helpful for me at all. And then try to limit your caffeine. Again, this is, I love coffee, so it's a hard one for me, but at least if you're gonna have caffeine, try to cut it off at five or six at night so that you can get as restful as asleep as you can and you're not having it, you're not waking or you're not gonna get up to the bathroom five times, six times, just try to decrease the caffeine. Again, caffeine is gonna elevate that nervous system too. I don't want you guys to be boring, but I want that parasympathetic nervous system to wake up and not let you always be tense. 
Because we all know that I, can, I bet each of you can look back to a stressful time in your life and you probably had some muscle ache, pain that once that stressor was gone, all of a sudden, oh, where'd that go? I know I, it's happened to me. I won't tell you why, but uh, it definitely happened to me where I was going through a really rough time and I had this constant right shoulder, shoulder blade pain. And then once that stressor was gone, it was gone. Okay, uh, and then uh, other things, so stress management. I think yoga is a great thing. I know you guys have chair yoga in here. Meditation. <laughs> What's that? Meditation. Yes, uh, yoga, meditation, all those things, deep breathing. Um, there's one thing called um, diaphragmatic breathing. You know, your diaphragm's right here, and this is the thing that we should use quite a bit when we breathe. However, most people, especially people that are uh, in this higher stress level, they do what we call upper costal breathing or upper rib breathing. They, they, they don't know how to engage this, so when they're breathing, they breathe more with the muscles up here, which is going to feed into neck pain and chronic muscle tightness. Mm -hmm. So again, I could be the best physical therapist in the world, but if you leave my office or Zach gets done with you and you go right back to the pattern, we're probably gonna fail at it. But it's our job to educate you. And then we have our, our contact information on there. Um, I, we're welcome to answer any question you have. and are welcome to stay as long as you want. I know you got lunch coming up and that's probably more important than this, but um, we're here to answer questions and help however we can, but thank you for your time. It means a lot to me that we've had this opportunity. Thank you to Beth. I've known Beth for four, 2020, coming up on four years. So we've been grateful for being able to come in here and treat some of you guys. And uh, so we do, we treat mobile and we also now have an outpatient clinic, which is in the Valley. And the, the, the newbie is only in our clinic in the Valley. So. Um, I just wanted to tell you that we don't have one out in the field yet, so. Well, thank you, Dr. Mike, thank you. and thank you everyone <clears throat> for being patient with the <laughs> outage here. It is not to make just this point, it's a it's block wide, so they are working on it. Um, but thanks for sticking around. You kept it very interesting. Oh, thanks. Um, could you, on your way out, if you don't mind, we have a sign-in sheet. If you haven't signed in already, please do it. We have cups and no cubes. Feel free to take whatever you want. It's better here than sitting in my office. Yes. I have a couple of questions in the lifestyle area. Yes. Thank you for your presentation. First question is how many minutes of exercise should 70 to 80 year old people have each week? Second question is whether uh, it's better to walk or to swim. Third question is in exercising, should you strive to increase your pulse rate by a certain percentage? How do you know when you've done enough exercise? Great questions. First question is how many minutes? How many minutes in a week should you exercise? Well, uh, the American College of Sports Medicine, the standard is 150 minutes of aerobic exercise. 150 minutes. 150 minutes, that's, that's for adults. Now, Zach, you can help me out. I don't think they have a separate for 70 to 80 year olds. <laughs> so the, the thing is, is if you're at zero and our goal is 150, we got to start at maybe 10 or 20 minutes a week. And you got to then stair step it up. It may take you three or four months to get there, but that's okay. But that that's what the goal is. And that should be spread over the entire week rather than concentrated in one or two days. Yes. For any exercise, when I'm, when I'm prescribing a home exercise program, I tell every patient, I'm, I would much rather prescribe you one exercise that you do five times a day than five exercises that you do one time a day. Because it takes doing things over and over and over before it becomes automatic. Five to 6,000 repetitions before it becomes automatic. Does so Tai Chi qualify as an exercise? I would definitely say yes. 
Okay, what what goals should we have in terms of increasing our pulse rate or our blood pressure? Yeah, what's that? Oh, so uh, the, the question is, uh, yes. like, what would be a goal for increasing? What should your heart rate go up to? Right. Well, that is going to be dependent on a few things. You know, um, it used to be, and I don't know exactly how, but it used to be 220 minus your age yeah. times like 60% is where you sort of should be. But I would say it's going to be variable. I do recommend you get a heart rate monitor or something like that that you can see your pulse. Okay? Also, some medication? Yes. Good point. Beth said it depends upon medication you're taking as well. So that's probably a good question. If we were going to work with you and we were going to focus on that, we would probably give your physician's office a call and say, hey, you know, this gentleman, we're starting to work with him. Based upon the medicine he takes, what would you think would be a goal for us for a start rate? So we would have to have that conversation. And it's walking versus swimming? Walking versus swimming. I, you know, they're both, they're both great. It, it really depends upon what you enjoy. I would never tell someone that hates swimming, oh, I want you to swim three times a week. You have to do what you enjoy. Now, I do like the kind of cross-training effect. Mm -hmm. If you're good with, if you're okay with doing both, do them both and maybe alternate when they walk, when they swim. Just like when kids, when kids are, are young, we want them to play many different sports so their bodies get stressed in many different ways compared to just always throwing a baseball and having an elbow injury. So vary it up is good. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Are your services covered by Medicare? Yes. So. The question is, our service is covered by Medicare. We are a Medicare Part B provider, okay? If you have Medicare Advantage plan, we are, we do see those patients out of network. We are not in network with the Medicare Advantage plans. If you want to see us either in the clinic or via mobile, if you have Medicare Advantage, call us. We will call your insurance and see what the benefits are. Okay. Any other questions? And if anyone wants to experience what this, this newbie feels like, we have it here. It's charged and we're ready to go. I know it's getting warm, so I'll let you guys guide. And yeah. All right. All right. Let's give Dr. Michael a hand. Thank you. Thank you. I did not ask you, but 
Do you have a pacemaker? No, I do okay. not. <laughs> Zach, please announce to people if they have a pacemaker. We can't do this on my phone. Yeah, if you have a pacemaker, we cannot do this, so let us know. Let me know when to five out of ten. Should be getting closer. Okay, tell me it's about a five out of ten. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to move this around, okay? And I want you to let me know when you feel like it's a hot spot, a real kind of irritated area. Yeah. Yes. 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 Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, okay. Wow. <laughs> so to me, this is the worst thing, right? So I'm going to turn it back down a little bit. Wow. Now, what I'm going to do is move this electrode down. Okay. And twice the whole day. Can you reach? Yep, got it. Now, in the clinic, we would have you in a room, and I would probably be go down to your glute area. Here, I'm just going to go up. We will probably go down because I guarantee you have a lot of trigger points in your butt. Or I meant those. Yeah, your glutes and your hips. So we're, we're going to go up here. Just So let me know when we go up to that 5 out of 10 again. I'm going to turn it back up. <laughs> Let me know when. Getting stronger. Okay, let me know what's a five out of ten. About there. So I'm going to move this around, and you let me know if anything. I uh, hit any spot where you feel it in this electrode, especially the one that's already on you. Yeah, the one on the bottom. Let me know when I put a stack of this card. Yeah, I can feel that. Feel that there? Okay. Do you feel it in the spot here? Do you feel it right here in this electrode or both? Okay, so I'm going to put the other one right here. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I think he's going to get it. Try it out. Alright, so we can lower this down. Okay. That's all I'm going to turn it up. You know how earlier I said we're going to turn it up to a 5? Now we're going to turn it up to 7. Okay. It's going to be a little bit stronger. You're still going to be able to tolerate it, but you're going to feel it's like, yeah, it's getting a little bit uncomfortable. So here we go. We can only take a Okay, we're going to keep going. So I'm going to get to a seven, okay? okay. You're getting close. Okay. 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 Okay, so you're right now we have 75%. So, what that means is you're, you're handling 75% of what this machine can tolerate. So, that's pretty good. Most people start at 25 or 30%. Okay, so, I want you to, we're going to do just a couple exercises now. If we're in the clinic, we probably have you on a table doing a couple things, but we're going to do a couple other things here, okay? So, just cross your arms on your chest for me. Sit up nice and tall. Just you very gently rotate. Just move. And don't hurt yourself. Just go with the hips. Okay. Come back to center. Just come back to right. So what's going to do about it? Yeah. 